Hello folks, it's Clint Moss. I'm back again with Gunner Energy Services. We're pulling back the curtain on matters involving well control, well intervention, and complex completion. This video today is specifically to address a question uh, that I solicited and that I love to receive online. It comes from Phil Harbage with Path Control. I know Phil, I know the Path Control guys. They do fantastic work and uh, I'm delighted that they're participating and asking me these questions. The question was um, that Philip posed on LinkedIn, is there an effect with ranging and um, an end of pipe? So that is to say if we have a target well that has a cased, uh, perhaps it's a cased tubular um, or it's a uh, fish, a BHA, well there's a top and bottom of the pipe, isn't there? And is there an effect on ranging? In fact, uh, there is an adverse effect on active ranging and a, benef uh, a beneficial uh, a response that we see in our passive ranging analysis. And I'm going to go through that, folks, with you on the whiteboard. Uh, stay tuned. This is going to be a, a really interesting episode. First of all, uh, I'm going to do this familiar scene where I redraw uh, a section view. So here I am again up here standing on the surface. And... Um, I just want to show you, I'll show you a, a drilling rig. Okay, here it is. And now I'm going to actually draw the wellbore. We have some various casings set. And um, on this next casing, I'll just pretend it goes right back to surface. Here we are down here. And this is a simple case where I want to drill a relief well to come down and intersect uh, the shoe. And gen generally speaking, you know, when we, um, when we plan these wells, let's say for a relief well scenario, we want to get as close as possible uh, to that shoe because we want the hydrostatic head, the, the advantage of having a greater column of fluid upon which to exert um, our downward force when we intersect and gain hydraulic communication. Okay, so we're typically aiming for the shoe, but uh, not so fast. If we want to intersect this with a relief well, uh, we need to be careful because our active ranging that we typ typically deploy uh, has some uh, environmental effect here. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's pretend that we, I'm going to draw it in blue. We have a different rig here and uh, here it is. And um, I'm going to draw now just a well path and come down here and I'm going to have, uh, you know, a place to inject and my a uh, little probe, and here is the current, the excitation current, and current will flow on this uh, case, it can flow up and down. But, um, remember, the current is looking for a path of least resistance, um, or it can be thought about that way, in actual fact, it, it's seeking to take all paths proportionally, but we can think about it, look, it looks at a path of least resistance, and it finds this, this conductor, and current, of course, wants to flow and then find its way back to the power supply on the rig that's you know over here uh, grounded somehow now i can probably convince you that if i'm injecting current into the formation um, that in fact the current uh, tends to collect preferentially on the casing but will not collect in an open uh, wellbore of any sort so let me just uh, clean up the drawing a little bit and just remind you of that so the current I'll draw it now in red so we can keep track of it. It wants to flow and collect on this casing. But why would it flow down here in perhaps some open hole section? Uh, it's not encouraged to, to, to flow um, you know, just through the strata. It wants to collect on the casing and flow back to the grounding point. So what does that mean um, in terms of operational execution? Well, current then will flow on this target, but it becomes increasingly low, lower and lower, to the point where there is no current flowing. And of course, at the end of the target well casing at the shoe, there has to be zero, okay? So there's no more current collection. Now, uh, that's a long way of explaining to say simply near the end of the casing or near the end of any pipe, whether it be a break or a fish or a casing shoe, um, the signal from active magnetic ranging reduces down to some unusable level. Now, in fact, you see I'm, I'm drawing these little arrows. They're getting increasingly small. I'm, I'm, I'm just illustrating that 
the actual magnitude of signal available there is decreasing till it gets to the end of pipe, which is zero. And in practical, uh, in terms of planning out these jobs from a practical viewpoint, I'll just cl clean up the drawing. It's really the last 100 feet or so that there is no usable signal when you're approaching the end of pipe. And now, in fact, we could be ranging against the end of pipe uh, further up the hole, need not be a shoe. Let's say for whatever reason, there's a break in this pipe as I'm illustrating right now. So let's say a section was caught and recovered years ago. Um, and that's not uncommon to see. That's not uncommon to see, particularly for old wells. So what, uh, what challenge do we have here? Well, we have a 100 foot kind of no-go zone at the top of the pipe up here, okay? 100 foot where there's no current. And we have 100 foot at the end of the pipe. So you can see the challenge for these very uh, short uh, casing sections, let's say, or in case that we had a fish. Now, the act of ranging is gonna have very little usable signal. So what do we do to uh, cope with that if our primary method of ranging is, is active, wireline undeployed active ranging? Well, in fact, we uh, purposely avoid um, planning on intersecting in these no-go zones. So be it close to the top of a, of a, of a pipe or target well ferromagnetic material or the bottom of the pipe. So we, we kind of then will concentrate our effort um, right here in the middle of the pipe to intersect. We certainly want to avoid those go and no-go zones. Now, um, I was going to also talk about passive magnetic ranging in this video, but and, and, and as it turns out, passive magnetic ranging has the opposite effect. We have the, we have the best um, possible scenario when we pass by a casing stub or a shoe. Uh, but I'll separate it because the video will be a bit too long. So stay tuned to part two uh, of this discussion where I will illustrate how passive magnetic ranging, in fact, uh, benefits from approaching the well near an end of casing or an end of pipe. So in summary, folks, uh, before I let you go on this video, keep in mind when um, using active magnetic ranging to approach a tar target and detect a distance and direction to the target uh, from another well, um, it's in particular for this style of you know, open hole relief well style active ranging, uh, we always establish or look through the wellbore schematic to find these no-go zones. So we don't want to count on making active ranging measurements at a minimum uh, before this 100 foot uh, top or bottom of, of pipe, uh, before that occurs. Okay, there you have it folks. Ask and you shall receive. If you have a question uh, about this or any other topic, uh, please feel free to reach out. You can email me, call me, um, uh, contact me on LinkedIn, and I will make this uh, video response uh, for you that goes through in detail uh, exactly y your question and uh, you know my, my answer to that. So folks, I really appreciate your engagement. Keep the questions coming and I will remain responsive. Thank you folks. It's Clinton Moss here with Gunner Energy Services.